Hi, welcome to the second part of these videos about me and my relation with fountain pens. In previous videos I talked to you about my relation um, with them until the moment I concluded that the Parker 45, this one I showed you, was a kind of a perfect pen for me. Uh, Although I always kept using fountain pens, I didn't buy many. Meanwhile, maybe besides uh, Pelican 200, M200, and this has these, uh, it is a smoked, uh, a transparent smoked color barrel. And uh, this Waterman Expert that had some problems, like these, it's not dirty, it is corroded nib. And Waterman Culture, which is a pen that I found to be great pen for around 10 euros and a pen that became very iconic to me. This Caveco Ice Sport Blue that is so uh, used that the, the feeling of the letters uh, was worn out. But this was a great pen. Uh, and this, these were the, the pens that I bought more or less since the Parker 45. But uh, in, the year, in the early 2000s, uh, my grandfather passed away and left me his pens, mostly uh, Parkers, like this Parker 41, this, sorry, this Parker 45, which is like that one, but with chrome trim, although it has gold nib. Um, a Parker 51, and this one is with lots of dings, and the nib is a little, it's not that straight, but it writes very well, and it's his pen, so I will keep it however destroyed it may be. And even a Parker 61 that has a, an engraving, but it was never used and it has that capillary filling system. And I, by that time, I already knew the Parker 45, but all the others were very unknown to me. I knew that one because I had the, the previous, but I already knew that these, the Parker 51 and Parker 61 were totally new and unknown, so I wanted to do some research about them. Uh, at the time there, there was not, or at least I didn't find it, much information available on the internet about pens. Uh, although Parker, about Parker there were already that uh, the Parker collectors page. Uh, so uh, there was no much time needed to conclude that Parker was the most interesting for me at the time, brand of fountain pens in the world. And soon, I also believed I had to collect at least one specimen of each Parker model. But how can anyone stick to one brand only? We start looking with different eyes and every pen store, every, every pen store window is an amazing opportunity and we keep wanting more and more pens that we didn't know we wished before. Uh, at the time there was still, uh, at Lisbon downtown, the best pen shop in the whole city. It was called Papelaria da Moda. It has been around since the 1930s and have a wide range of brands in the store. They were so fascinating, they even had older Parker models in the new, in the, in new old stock such as Parker 75, or Classic, or the 25, and so on. 
Um, with the, the, the stuff of that store, I learned as much about pen models and accessories I could. Uh, and I got to see vintage pens and accessories and I bought a lot of them. Then I got my first job and salary and that changed even a little bit. And I started watching eBay. And I started to buy some pens and this was the beginning of a new stage in my in collect my collecting relation with pens. First was my grandfather passing away and opening my eyes to vintage pens and then to have a salary that allowed me to buy new pens. And this was the first uh, pen that I got. This is my first pen purchase on eBay. And this is, <coughs> sorry, a Parker Challenger. It is a quite small pen, but a nice one. It, it is my first eBay purchase ever. Um, and then I followed into other models. Um, also, I went to some stores and I tried other brands uh, be besides Parker, like Pilot. And uh, about Pilot, I tried this Pilot Lucina, which I liked a lot because it reminded me of the Parker Dufold uh, design, although it's smaller. And also this amazing Pilot Bamboo, which is really, really a beautiful pen. And I had the urge to find as many uh, different Parker 45 as I could. You can see here some of my Parker 45 pens. Some are not that common, like these Coronet collection or even the the TX, which is this blue one, and some gold fields, and some bright colors, and even some desk pens. But, as I told you on the previous video, another uh, Parker model that I liked was the Parker Frontier. And that pen also, I wanted to collect as much as I can. So I have all these and this other row with the Parker Frontier. As far as I know, I'm only missing one, which is one like those, which has these two colored, green, black, uh, red, black, and blue, black, and there is one white, black. I could never buy one of them. But besides then, I have, I think I have all the other Parker Frontiers. And so, I, I, I got a little crazy about this and I collected a lot of these pens. And because I could afford them, I started to, to I continued buying some more. Um, and then the, there came the do folds. And do folds are a pen that impressed me a lot because of design. I think design is beautiful. And I have this nice box that I bought at that downtown store that I told you about. And here I have some of the Parker do folds I got. These are vintage ones and these are two modern ones. So I, I, I really love the, the Parker do fold design. And uh, I started like these and the, the, the modern ones and I couldn't stop with the, the Parker Dufold because there was the Parker 51 and also the Parker 51 there are some interesting colors and models. And so I started also collecting Parker 51s. I have one box of those also. And I have here some of those. This is a a costume barrel from uh, Ariel Kulok in Argentina, which is a very nice variation, but I have several other colors with silver caps and many variations. And I got a little crazy with these 
Parkers, but there were also other Parker, like the modern at that time, the special edition for 2012, the Parker 51. I also had the chance to, to get one of them. It has a silver plated cap that is quite oxidized now, but it is just a matter of cleaning it. A very beautiful pen, in my opinion. And um, then also there was a very expensive pen that I really liked. And I thought at that time it was the perfect pen replacing the Parker 45, which was this pen. It was a modern pen back then. And this is the Parker 100. Parker 100 Smoke Bronze Color, which is um, like a, a modern variation of the Parker 51. It is a very beautiful and nice pen. And I, I, this was such an urge to get new pens and new stuff based on the discovery I was been making every time that I even found the most impressive pen I ever got from eBay and it was a very nice deal which is the Parker T1. As you can see my favorite pens, my favorite brand was Parker and the Parker T1 is this one which has the integral nib. It has these red jewels on the barrel and cap and have these beautiful, just beautiful nib that is integral to the section. It's not a separate piece. Very beautiful pen. I think the design is, is wonderful. So, I know that I got a little crazy. Uh, I have around almost 100 Parker 45s. I have, uh, I don't know, 40 Parker Frontiers, a lot of other pens. And I, it, it was a real good time to get pens and to, to discover them, uh, mainly because some old stores that were about to close some years uh, later, still have a lot of new old stock. And with so many pens uh, and this increasing interest and this craziness, uh, it led to a point where the Objet Escrita or simply ODE blog was born. But this video is quite long by now. This is a story that I will tell you in the next video. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this was interesting. Don't forget to subscribe and please come back for the end of this, the, the history of our blog. See you next time. Bye.